In your book, you dispel a lot of myths, including what you call the myth of the Tiananmen Square Massacre. Can you tell us about that? The protests that occurred in Beijing and other cities in China during 1989 had numerous roots, but volatility due to economic reform uh, can be said to be the primary cause. The corporatization of China's uh, state enterprises caused chaos, massive unemployment, inflation, and a surge in governmental corruption. It was a variation on what's gone on in China for centuries, what still goes on today, uh, political elites uh, exploiting the instability they create to get rich and keep the masses weak and worried. The student protesters at Tiananmen Square had very specific demands. They wanted the right to demonstrate, freedom of expression, for party members and their families to report their earnings. They wanted elections, an end to government crusades against so-called spiritual pollution and bourgeois liberalism, and, and so on. Uh, their cause gained considerable momentum and lasted for about seven weeks. Demonstrations involving students and workers occurred in over 400 Chinese cities, and there was support and sympathy among over Chinese and Western countries. Because of the scale of the movement, the government chose to interpret it as evidence of the spiritual pollution and bourgeois liberalism it had been warning against. Clearly, these students had been corrupted by the decadent West, particularly the United States. Eventually, the government hardened its stance and branded the demonstrators terrorists and counter-revolutionaries, the same labels politicos tossed around during the Cultural Revolution, the same ones they assigned today to ethnic groups like the Uyghurs. On June 3rd, 1989, the military was ordered in to clear Tiananmen Square by force if necessary. A couple of weeks earlier, uh, the army had tried to do the same thing, but was thwarted by thousands of civilians who blocked them. In fact, soldiers and their commanders had become sympathetic to the demonstrators. So when the government ordered the military into the city a second time, it used two armies from other provinces. When the two armies entered the city, uh, Thousands of people took to the streets to block them again, but this time things got ugly. Civilians targeted soldiers and their vehicles, burning troops alive and beating them to death. The soldiers re uh, replied by shooting indiscriminately and crushing people with their tanks as they pressed toward the square and broke through civilian-made barricades. At 1 a.m. on June 4th, the soldiers arrived at Tiananmen Square, where only a few thousand students remained. The soldiers uh, informed the students they could leave and would not be harmed or punished. The students, however, required time to have a vote on whether to leave or not. Meanwhile, violent clashes continued around the square and elsewhere in the city. On Chang'anjie, for example, or the Street of Eternal Peace, some 300 civilians, mainly workers and passers-by, were killed in a clash with soldiers. It was sometime between 4 and 5 a.m. when the People's Liberation Army ran out of patience and entered Tiananmen Square, bursting through the last line of civilian barricades and reportedly crushing students in the process. Nevertheless, there was no massacre. The deliberating students were not mowed down by machine guns. Some were beaten, but they were allowed to leave. Uh, that there was no massacre was belatedly reported by eyewitnesses such as BBC correspondent James Miles. His assessment has been corroborated by CBS correspondent Richard Roth, who drove through the square in a jeep just after the square had been secured. Even students cleared from the square said later there was no massacre. There was certainly a massacre in Beijing, one in which hundreds and probably thousands of people died, and another one in the city of Chengdu, which never gets mentioned, but not in Tiananmen Square itself. So why do Western media outlets still report on the Tiananmen Square Massacre? Well, a, a lot of them don't. Uh, the New York Times, The Washington Post, and The Guardian, uh, to name a few publications, have made it clear that the Tiananmen Square Massacre is a myth and the upshot of shoddy journalism. As for media who haven't made the correction, I suspect it's largely a matter of intellectual laziness. Uh, the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, or CBC, faithfully reports on the quote-unquote Tiananmen Square massacre every June. In 2009, the CBC's The Current stated that after getting into the square, quote, Chinese soldiers began firing into the crowd, end quote, and that, quote, as many as 3,000 people were killed, end quote. On the same episode, former Beijing bureau chief to the Globe and Mail, Jan Wang, who 
I interviewed for Why China Will Never Rule the World said she watched the massacre, which lasted for a few hours, from a balcony of the Beijing Hotel. But just seconds after saying she observed the slaughter unfold, she said she couldn't see much, only the top of the square. At 1 a.m., she saw the military go in, and at 4 a.m., she saw the square's lights go off. She heard gunfire, but she doesn't report on what she saw between 1 o'clock and 4 o'clock. Rather, she shifts to what reporters on the ground saw, which was students being beaten and permitted to leave. So, we go from her having witnessed a massacre in which 3,000 people were killed, to having heard that students were struck, roughed up, and sent home. That's quite a disparity. The CBC is not on side in its annual coverage of the Beijing massacre, and it needs to be.